Hey guys, King Gath here with the King Gath Podcast. Today I have a very unique podcast set up and I'm very excited about this one. Uh, I've been wanting to chat with the creator of Inigo who uh, has created basically the best companion mod I've ever seen in my life for any game. And uh, unfortunately I haven't played Skyrim in so many years I thought I wasn't going to be equipped to properly interview and talk about the mod. So I brought in an expert. Uh, you all know and love him. Uh, welcome Gopher who's going to help me with this. Hello there. And we are talking with uh, Smart Blue Cat, a.k.a. Gary, the creator of Inigo, who's joining us via cell phone uh, because he lives in uh, the middle of nowhere where they don't have internet capable of uh, sound. So <laughs> welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm I'm really excited about this one because uh, I actually the the reason I uh, tagged you is because I noticed you've commented on some of my uh, videos and live streams. So I was like, oh great, he's a fan of uh, the work we're doing here, which is awesome. And I, I feel like there's this weird uh, gap between the Fallout Four and Skyrim modding communities, even though we effectively do the same thing, we're working on different games, we use the same tools, yeah. uh, have access yeah. to the same things, but there's a very, there are, there are a very big line between them. There are very few people that do both. Um, so it was cool to see that you were a fan of Fallout. Have you done any modding for it or are you exclusively all in on Inigo 100% of the time? Yeah, I'm 100% in on Inigo. Uh, I love keeping, trying to keep pace with Fallout 4, seeing what's going on there and I find it interesting. If Inigo wasn't so massive, I'd definitely be doing stuff for Fallout 4. Um, but yeah, Inigo's just, that's it for me. <laughs> as soon as I put my foot down that road, like, that was it. I, yeah. I knew that would be it. Yeah, I couldn't, I can't, if I took a break to go and do, like, a Fallout 4 companion or something like that, I'd be lynched, probably, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I really enjoy, I, I really enjoy working on Inigo, and because I keep expanding um, you know, I had a right from the beginning, I knew where I wanted to take him in that kind of silly way that when modders start, they go, I'm going to make this massive world, world space and it's going to have this and it's going to have that. And then they fail. I took it really slowly and just thought, well, if I can get to this stage, then I can maybe try getting scenes in there. And then if I get scenes working, then I can maybe try a cell that I've designed. And but I still kept in mind like a bigger picture. So I'm still working through that. And it's been almost six years. <laughs> to get to this stage but yeah. it's uh, coming together yeah it's been great yeah. like watching your development and i saw on your site that uh you did a the last update i saw was i think december uh that you're still trucking away last and year. it's crazy yeah it's december last year it's crazy that you're still going on this and it's awesome to see because i i personally would love to have a mod keep going like that to where i could develop on it for years to come uh, and it's awesome to see that there's an audience for it that sticks around that's my favorite part about working on bethesda games versus games that i've worked on in the past um, Gopher, yeah, how long ago right. did you discover Inigo? Because you use it as pretty much your your only companion in your playthroughs. Well, I was being bombarded with requests back when I was playing a character called Richard to use this um, this character. But everyone was telling me that it came with a backstory and it would be incompatible with Richard. It turns out that it's not the case. <laughs> Inigo's... Inigo's backstory will actually fit any character. And I actually think Inigo would probably have suited the more heroic character Richard better. However, I love the fact that he's at, I'm actually playing a fairly unheroic character and often feel like uh, I'm the sidekick to Inigo's <laughs> heroism. <laughs> But it was it was essentially that people were just bombarding me with. Um, and it with... made me feel terrible seeing that happen, <laughs> you know, because I, I I was a I'm a fan of yours, Gopher. I watch your videos to chill out. I watch your videos the way I watch TV shows or like Netflix or whatever. I watch your series. I mean, I think they're fantastic. And then whenever that would happen, I mean, I think I even broke cover, like in 2015 or something. I broke cover and was like, guys, just it's it's up to him, just let him just stop <laughs> stop bombarding him with these requests. It's ridiculous, you know. I'm the creator of Inigo and I've got no urge to see him, you know, um go against what he wants to do in his place right, right. now. Right. What if no but the thing is is they were actually right about how good it was and I'm I mean I couldn't have even imagined how right they were. But I mean, I am so glad that I waited until the next character. I mean, Richard already had this sort of thing going with Carjo, and yeah, I I'd, definitely. I'd got that dynamic. So I'm glad yeah. I waited. And like I said, the, the the difference between Leonard and Inigo, I think, is it, it really makes it fun for me. So I'm glad I did. 
But even once they started playing Leonard with Inigo, I was getting so many comments. It, you you yeah. actually contacted me and said, just ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did. Because there's this whole sub-community that they love to backseat drive quite, uh, with Inigo because Inigo's made in such a really, he's made in such an eccentric way compared to other followers that there's a real kind of pride for a lot of people who've used him for a while about learn lines that they've managed to trigger, you know, right. and things that they're missing out on. So they watch a Let's Play and go, oh, you should have done that because Inigo would have said this and <laughs> they're actually wrong. You're you know? <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. That was... Um, but yeah, like I've said to you before, you know, you just get what you get with Inigo. He's designed that way. He's almost designed to your design. It's, it's designed with missing content in mind, like you know. In, in you a could play him multiple times for multiple characters and yeah. see different things. Well, what I here's yeah. here's what I I found with Inigo is that everyone was saying to me, "You're going to miss, or not? You're going to miss. You're using Inigo wrong. You cannot use Inigo like a normal follower." The thing is. I kind of can because I always yeah. play off the NPCs. Usually I have to imagine what the NPCs are saying, but I actually yeah, do play sure. off them. Inigo caught me by surprise, but but at the same time, it worked well with my playstyle because not only do could I sort of play off him, he played back. And so people were saying, oh, you, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. Luckily, I played far enough ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I played far enough ahead, so I knew what they were talking about because I'd already seen it. But I didn't need to know it. Inigo told me. Inigo would say, "Why don't we sit down and chat for a while?" Yeah, so glad you picked up on that because a lot of people. I mean, you were very kind in in your review, and uh, thank you so much for that. Um, but Anytime. really, I mean, a lot of a lot of the mail I get to this day. I mean, I still receive probably. 200 emails every three days on about Inigo and I mean, it's just impossible to keep up with but the vast majority of them are just that you know I don't understand how this works I've heard this happens mm -hmm. da, 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 all this kind of stuff that I've tried to have Inigo kind of explain naturally um, so it was good to see I kind of figured that if you if you did ever try him out I kind of thought that your style from watching you for over the years I thought you would obviously pick up on a lot of stuff and uh, and and it would go the way that it did so it was, it was really good to see that. Um, but even just you using the whistle so much, you actually highlighted uh, a couple of things where I, where I was like, okay, I'll get rid of that one day. It's really low on my priority list, but I'll fix that like near the end before I release version three. And because I've seen you use the whistle so effortlessly, you did that episode where you started using it and that was it. You were off the races. And like, oh, that was amazing. And I love it. Like, I love that. So yeah. many people just don't use it at all. They don't use it at all, right? And so the fact that you're sneaking and whistling, I mean, there was accidentally, I think there's a bl an accidental blocking line in his whispered responses when you're asking him to wait. And I think there are actually two responses you're never hearing in the current version. Um, <laughs> and I tested it over, I think I tested, you know, how many times do you ask a, character, a follower to wait in a dungeon during a normal playthrough? And it was like, I think they repeat, like, I don't know, they repeat like once, I think there's one that repeats every hour in game and then two that repeat really quickly. And then, but the actual list is five. And yeah, and so, cause I was only testing, I was, thinking, I was hearing three different responses and going, right, they work, you know, and I heard the other ones, yeah. you know, just uh, another testing. As soon as I saw you play, I was like, hang on, something's going wrong. Cause you're asking him to wait all the time, you know, on the fantasy <laughs> to play style. Do so you I find... instantly went in there and, and checked it all. And I was like, oh no, there it is. Yeah, there it is. There's something missing. This one was set to repeat every, like 0. 0.2 seconds or something. It was ridiculous, uh, you know, two of an hour. Um, so that's it was blocking everything else in front of it. Do you and find, also moving oh. things, things like moving the I moved the script frags to the front of the lane instead of the back, which was seems like such an obvious thing to do. But I only did that because of you. Because <laughs> <'cause laughs> I'm not, not really... testing him quite extremely. <laughs> uh. yes. Well, that's what's great because that's what I watch a lot of. If I'm working on Enigo, I'm normally listening to a let's play of Enigo. So if I hear people complain, most of the time it's just stuff that isn't anything to do with Enigo uh, that is breaking him somehow. But that is like a great example of, um, yeah, someone's work influencing my work back because really at the end, because you're having to wait for him to finish the line, that's why he follows you a little while, you know, and then after you right. say wait, he'll, he'll keep following you for, for like a couple of seconds just until the line's finished and then the frag fires and he waits. So I just like moved them all to the front. It should have been a no-brainer. It was like a legacy from really early on. 
like before he even had the whistle where those frags were. That's yeah. one of the the thing you're talking about with the, him influencing your stuff. That's one of my favorite reasons to see people stream mods is because I, I don't know if they if people who do streaming recognize how much of an impact they can have on the the path of oh, the mod. Not- yeah, because that's like it's so hard to get that feedback yourself because when you're playing it, you know exactly what it's supposed to do, and you're kind of unit testing. You're not really just enjoying it, and so uh, when you watch other people enjoy it, you can look for the rough edges and clean those up. And I actually was I actually just rewatched go for your first season of uh, Skyrim Special Edition yesterday because I wanted to remember how Inigo gets started, and I was floored by how natural uh, Inigo teaches himself, like teaches it as a yeah as a gameplay mechanic like you'll just arbitrarily walking by him and he'll he'll mention that he's got a book for you or he just says like hey do you happen to know how to whistle and i was like that's brilliant like it just felt it felt natural when it happened uh it didn't feel like you were forced to do it and you were just being taught it slowly over time it was just it was like great game design on top of being uh a really immersive companion yeah mr dragonfly like the fact that the inigo actually says because i kept mr dragonfly and i Inigo actually tells me this. Now, I was delayed in the videos, and there were people uh-huh. in, in the comments going, oh, you've got to give him Mr. Dragonfly. But I already knew that Inigo actually tells you. I mean, it's, it's amazing. He just he constantly responds to his environment and to what you do. And I think that's what makes him feel so alive. He is responding in a way that the standard followers don't. They just repeat the same things no matter what, Inigo totally and utterly seems aware of what is going on. Yeah, when it's when it's working. Yeah, and, and a lot of that <laughs> is really, it's, a lot of that is really, I think, limiting stuff. And I think that's maybe where certain other followers go wrong. Like, you've got to be willing to have him say nothing if there's a chance that if he speaks, it's going to be really bad. You know, <laughs> if it's going to be bad and it's going to be really out of place, those moments will always happen, but I think instead of conditioning lines to be like, okay, well, if all this is true, then say this. I also say, as long as all this isn't true on top of that. You right. Know? And so my, stacks, so my stacks are really big and I've got blocking silent lines um, at the top of most of his idols where they're just, it's just two, it's like a second of silence with no lip file that is conditioned that if certain NPCs I know he has scenes with or that he's around a lot are speaking he will that idol will always play on top of any of anything else so things like that it doesn't always work and obviously i can't go and reference every character in the game you know and i can't have them always checking that but the top ones that he's most likely to be around um i do things like i do a is moving uh zero check like on right. and then it's not sorry it's not zero so a lot of his idols that repeat more often if he is going to interrupt someone when you're standing still He's got a much smaller kind of thing, that, uh, number of lines he'll say. But if you're moving around, that opens up more. And why I did that is because when you're talking to someone, you're, stop, you're standing still. So right. that blocks that from happening. Oh, that's cool. Also, so I suppose if, you, if you're listening to someone, you stand still. If you yeah. just listen to some idle chatter. So, yeah. yeah. No. That's, that's very, clever. That's the very idea, clever. anyway. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's such a struggle with all that stuff to get everything to fire correctly with your scenes and with all of the different things that could be going on in the game. And you want it to feel immersive. You want these characters to feel like they blend in. I think you've done a fantastic job, but we're also just battling the nature of a Bethesda game is that they're they're meant to be unpredictable and chaotic and there's just all these these different things interacting with each yeah. other. So uh, I can, that's a very clever solution with the, uh, with the standing still and assuming that they're probably in conversation. I like that a lot. Because even it picks up even if you're moving just slightly, if you're just tapping, you know, left or right or whatever, then suddenly all the lines, the line, most of the lines are then valid. You know, even if it's just someone what, taking a step back. I, I've seen it where I've had to check it because I thought, oh, hang on, he shouldn't have really said that because it's someone just exiting a conversation and the conditions just picked up on that, you know, it's just caught at exactly the right moment. And then I've gone in and checked and it's been fine. It's just picked up on that tiny bit of movement. Yeah, it's interesting. Sure. Yeah. So have you got go for? Have yeah. you gotten into much of the DLC stuff? Because I know uh, Gary, that's been on your list of like after I finish V3, I'm going to go back and do maybe assuming <laughs> that you've got the energy and the willpower to go back and do DLC coverage at all. Um, I guess I was yeah. gonna go for it when you find yourself doing any of the DLC stuff, or maybe you haven't. Have you missed the quips from? Well, from no, that's that is it. I mean, I've I've actually. I mean, I sort of triggered the Dawn Guard 
DLC, but it just it, my idea for it was a little incompatible with Leonard at the time. So I've I've got to figure out how I'm getting back into that. So that's a while away, probably two chapters. And Dragonborn, I, I haven't quite figured out where I'm sticking that in. In I'd love to do that DLC soon, but I'm not going to be rushing for the update for Indigo because, in actual fact, um, the Dragonborn DLC introduces quite a big power spike for the main character sure. um and and so i'm actually quite happy to keep those two or three chapters away at least so i mean i don't know what the timetable is for inigo but i might actually be able to see any changes when it comes you might be able to you might be able, I, not regarding dlc is probably quite unlikely i mean i it's very hard to kind of um you know it's that when will be finished thing but um where I, all I'm thinking about is the version three thing. That's it. I after that, then I. It's really I'm not like I'll do version three, then I'll move on to the DLCs. Uh, it's really what you said, thing. It's like I'll finish version three, and then I'll take stock and go right. How much fuel have I got left in the tank? Because it's, right. <laughs> right. it's a lot <laughs> of gears, maybe. Because yeah. yeah. because really, and also I mean, any go will comment. His generic dialogue will still work throughout all those locations. You know, if you're in a Draugr crept in Solstein or an N, you'll still have those comments. You can still have sit down com conversations and stuff. I mean, I'd love to have, you know, Langley argue with Neil Austin and stuff. Like, that would be fantastic. But, um, the, yeah, it's just, it's not something I'm even letting myself think about it, even though I get emails about it every week. Uh, you know, hundred, just, yeah, 100% yeah, understand. Too much other stuff. It's uh, yeah, you get yourself into freecher creep hell where you're like, I don't know if I can ever do anything oh. again in my life. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, how exactly. many thousands of hours have you got in Inigo now? Um, it's all just Inigo, and I've got like I don't know, but I've only ever really used the creation kit for Inigo, and it's like twelve thousand hours or something. Holy Jesus! Um, no, that's and, not a surprise to me at all. Yeah, and. Yeah, that's not including like obviously mixing down audio and writing and all the art and everything that I've done for it as well. Um, so yeah, it's a bit insane. And also yeah. sit, been just sitting years. down thinking <laughs> and do sitting down and thinking and pushing through things. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you'd spent like twice that. Yeah, uh, I mean it's, yeah, it's yeah, people don't think about it. You've probably not thought about how much of your life has disappeared to sim settlements king gath you oh, no, probably I have i'm not allowed to think about that that would be bad <laughs> i i once calculated how much time i'd spent on one of my mods i think it was the advanced recon series of mods and it was it was it was somewhere between two and three thousand hours in total that was the mod where i pretty much learnt everything and, and i mean it, it it went through so many transformations and i ended up i mean that ended up going into so many different areas so i the learning curve was was there all the time but yeah i mean it's one of the mods i'm probably not even known for anymore but um it's it took such a huge chunk of my life and people just don't even realize that and it's not even no, i'd say this is probably the same with sim samos but almost certainly with inigo it's the the first eighty percent getting it basically working only takes about what twenty percent of your time standard <laughs> development. <laughs> right, but right. it's that little bit of polish, right? That little just getting everything working just right that takes like four or five times longer than just getting the basics. So probably you going back through and making sure Inigo is saying the right thing at the right moment probably took like so much more time than people could possibly imagine oh man you got me terrified spend, now because I, I haven't even it. started that last 80 percent step yet <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, you, you, you've done so much though as well i mean it's like there's when i look at some settlements i'm just like how is this possible like i, I don't i'm kind of just baffled by like i i mean i've i haven't uh, i haven't had a chance to go through conqueror yet but just the I've, I've used some settlements a lot like you know just in its earlier forms and so it, it waxes and wanes depending on what i'm doing i love that mod so much it's just a work of genius and um yeah but every time i look at him it's like this is just insanity like <laughs> it just, it's so obviously insanity i think you know um it's it's, it's that, amazing well, that's, i mean when that's you, why when, i can't look at my slash play time that. in the ck <laughs> it's not it would be yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. it would be unpalatable especially if my wife saw it it would be like i would feel like uh <laughs> about, yeah. gonna get my computer taken away by my mom or something <laughs> like man when, you, a start, when hours. you started that did you how much did you think you were going to, how big was Sim Settlements going to get when you realized you had something that was working from that moment when you were like, right, I can, I'm getting I, close to my first release. 
Oh, like, I didn't think it was going to be a big deal at all. I, I remember reaching out to a couple people in the Nexus Discord and being like, hey, do you mind trying out this mod I came up with? Um, I've been like, because I had I had a reasonable success with Salvage Beacons, which I know go for Braggs is the or Braggs for me. Is Greatest the best mod <laughs> ever made. <laughs> But maybe uh, and, apart from Indigo, maybe apart from Indigo, but like Salvage Beacons, just, dude, that was a genius mod. Yeah, it's genius, it's absolutely genius. Okay, so we had a little technical difficulty, mostly because uh, I didn't realize I had a full hard drive, uh, but that conversation we were in just got cut off, but uh, I'm going to try and pick us back up and get us back on track here, so I still got uh, Gary, Smart Blue Cat, and Gopher with me, and uh, w w after I had talked about uh, some settlements, and it... it it's a, it definitely surprised me with the success of that, and thankfully there were a lot of people in the community which were helpful uh, to maintain a lot of the communication and stuff. And then um, what you guys missed, I don't want to rehash everything in the conversation, but effectively we got into talking about the fact that uh, we try not to reveal too much about where the mod's going. So I didn't have it all planned out at the beginning of some settlements, and, and, and it's just kind of been evolving over time. And we have so much more planned still, but I just don't talk about it in public very much because I'm worried that some of this stuff might not work out. It might be that the plans are too big because we tend to feature creep a lot when we're getting excited about things. Uh, <laughs> and then I had thrown that over to Gary to say, like, do you find yourself doing the same thing? with uh inigo of like you've got these huge massive dreams and some of them you start tweaking with stuff and then how do you control yourself from sharing that so that you don't get held to this crazy standard and the dead the the ideas people come up with in their heads about how long this stuff actually takes versus yeah. the reality we were just talking about about how you know each of us has thousands of hours into the creation kit on our mods uh, gary your, your numbers sound insane i'm glad i haven't looked at mine uh but how do you how do you maintain that control so you don't let yourself release too much because it gets real exciting right you get those big ideas you start them working and then it's like, man, I kind of want to just show people this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what I did was the, the, when I introduced the idea of opening the door to the quest the, where all version 3 takes place, I left it on a very intentional cliffhanger um, where you meet, you know, Langley and he's like, right, okay, you've got some install now. Um, I'll contact you if I hear anything else. <laughs> and then nothing for like years, you know. <laughs> um, but that, But that was... That was me going. Okay, if I if I can't if I can I could give me some time just to go. What can I do if I can't figure out how to do what I want to do? Um, then I can do something simpler. Um, but yeah, I didn't really give anything away at all there. I had I've had the idea since like 2014, 2000, late 2013. I had a very rough idea of what the the main big bad would be and stuff. I wanted it to be to be something kind of original and. Uh, I also wanted to um, kind of reinforce the links between Enigo's story and the player's story just out of the gate. There are certain similarities I mess around with there. Um, so I had a lot of concept art and stuff like that. None of that got shared. As soon as I started building the world space, um, I felt a little bit more confident about it. And it was probably a year after that that I started releasing images of just a wall with like some things <laughs> going on it and so with, with with a very kind of nondescript um you know this is how i'm handling lighting in this blah blah blah, blah. But really the main thing about inigo's in version 3 is really the story it's the narrative so um there's like lots of mechanics and things that i've added and, and all that kind of stuff but as long as i stick to the physical stuff as long as i just show off i can show off areas and things uh in little parts i'm resigned to doing that now um but yeah, I just won't go near the narrative. I just that's the cutoff. I won't talk about anything that's going to happen. I won't talk about you know characters and things like that because um, it's been going on so long and the updates have been every every year. I, I do a couple of updates, big updates, um, and I just show a little bit more, a little bit more. But that's the line I won't cross. You sure. know, as long as I, I just don't talk about the narrative. Yeah, I've noticed your your site has a lot of um, kind of adventures and creation kit type stuff posted. We're like, hey, you want to learn about the hell that is nav meshing? Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, which yeah, yeah. that's a, that stuff's a great thing to show people without having to spoil what you're actually working on. Which uh, it, it was fun to see that some of the stuff you were posting because like oh, yeah, I remember learning that lesson. That was a pain. Um, like the uh, <laughs> figuring figuring out little tricks about things you can do in the in the creation engine to speed things up. Like the fact that the default AI packages the the NPCs will chase after each other if they are linked raft. Yeah. Like stuff like that that's is amazing. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Just cool. it's awesome to get more and more efficient at that. Now in all your I mean, literally, literally, you've been working on this mod for years. Um, have you found 
as you're going through and, and updating Inigo and working on this stuff where you look back at some of your previous stuff and think, wow, that is cringy. How did I, why did I do it that way? Um, and <laughs> <laughs> do you find, do you find a all lot of that? Time. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Cause it's, he's, um, yeah, he's, he bears the marks of someone learning their trade, you know, like well, there's whole, <laughs> there, there, there are these whole like conversations that I would just do completely differently that were really, I mean, I've said this before and, I I didn't know if I when I taught when I was teaching myself the creation kit and stuff I'd never played with a mod like I didn't know what the nexus was I came at it purely from a game design angle I liked the followers uh, in Skyrim I, in in terms of I saw them as blank canvases I was like maybe you could do more with that and I started researching mod I was in pre production for a, a film that I was working on and it was something I was doing in the evenings I was just like you know pottering around and learning it just for fun I didn't really know where I was going to release it. And so a lot of the ideas that are still in there technically are legacy from that time, and it's just been spruced up slightly. But I would never do them now. Like the um, there's a conversation you can have when you're sitting in an inn, and it's got about 300 lines in it, and mm-hmm. people only ever hear like 20 or something because like unless you go back and revisit and revisit and revisit it because the, I did random branching topics as a as an experiment. So what happens is if you say, what do you think of Skyrim so far? He can reply like four different ways and those branch your wow. responses. Not so they lead, they lead off to different, like, so yeah, there are all these hidden little conversations that are just down to chance. You know, they're in there that it's so, uh, it would crash the dialogue. You would crash my, <laughs> would crash the creation kit every time I opened it. It's horrible. I had to learn how to use, you know, the player dialogue view. Um, but things like that are just insane. I'd never do that now. I'm glad it's in there in a weird kind of way. I was like, that's pretty weird that I did that and it's still there. Um, but if I was starting from scratch, I wouldn't. I would. Things like that do make me kind of go, what was I thinking? Sure. And you know, I think the you know, I think the conversation when he first meets Langley, that was me just like trying to work out how a scene works and how do I keep people in place and you know, how do I? What do I do if someone walks in there with an army of followers? <laughs> you know that are just going to clutter up the whole thing, and it's like all this kind of stuff. How do I protect the scene? You know, and all that kind of stuff. So I think that scene. You know, I'd probably do it very differently now. I would. You know, I've learned a lot of things that are. You know, that would have that would have helped back then. Um, and I think you can see a lot of that jank in Enigo, and even his <laughs> voice. You know, there's old. There's old. There are very old Enigo files that are still in there, where he's far more raspy um, yeah. and more caricatured. So that's that, natural, isn't it? We all like, look back at our work. It's just weird because when it's in one project that spans years. Right, you know, right, right. Like, that was he's like cutting into the tree. That's actually a concern we have constantly in uh, the some settlement stuff because we're doing story mod stuff now. Is that we have we have to make sure when we start we tell the voice actors like, hey, this is going to be a long like, your role is going to be going on for a long time, so we need you to use a voice that you could repeat that will sound similar. Uh, and then, like one of our sound leads warned us that one of the problems they've had working because uh, our our sound uh, team leader who originally started on some Sullivan's project is also working on Skywind, and he said one of the problems we've had is that people will because this is a multi year project, people will change their audio setup during the development, and then oh, that changes God. the audio profile. So then the character can yeah. sound completely different because it's really hard to make a physical space sound the same. So like there's all these like th- little things that come up that you would never never even consider until you get in there, get in the weeds and start messing with it. Yeah. Yeah, I've just had to let a lot of that stuff go, I think. And and I try and get it as close as I can. But when I got to about 4,000 vo- like voice lines, I was just like listening to occasional, anything that caught my, like tugged at my ear and was like, that's terrible. I would, uh, I would go in and replace. Um, but then there were whole things like his Scar story. Most of that that story is in his old voice. But what I did was I re-recorded the first line and the last line, and I did transitions between those the voice types. So I made it sound like he was getting into a mood uh, to tell his story. So, <laughs> <laughs> so things like that's that. clever. So I, so I didn't have to kind of re-record like 400 lines. So yeah. like, cause, you know, wait, so, so wait, um, you've got 4,000 lines in Inigo. Seven thousand. Uh, seven. Uh, no, there's seven thousand lines in Inigo, and yeah, um, but that's also including like when he's talking to Carjo or Lydia and Miol and stuff. Right. They, their lines are obviously um, cut and pasted in there as well, and uh, I've recreated their responses. Uh, I've created their responses just by chopping up the vanilla dialogue and kind of trying to get it to sound natural. And uh, how many lines? About, 
How many lines did the the main protagonist have in Fallout Four? They were really proud of it. Was it thirteen thousand? Yeah, I think it's thirteen or fourteen. So yeah, you're almost you're like halfway there. <laughs> 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 and that's oh what I think they said they worked the the voice actors were on like a full time VA schedule, which is like four hours a day, uh five days a week. They did that for a year and a half. So that's a lot. And you've you've yeah. you've essentially come to half of that. Was that fourteen thousand with both voice actors for the male and female? Do you think, do you think it was like seven thousand lines for each? No, no, I think it's fourteen thousand per because we I use per, yeah. Right. But you're still you're still getting into the territory of um of of an actual voiced character, yeah, not not a right. voiced NPC. The <laughs> character who speaks to yeah. every NPC in the game. Wow, well, it's, out of, it's out of the territory of sanity. That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll just ha- I'll just have these crazy ideas. Like the, the coder uh, is a wonderful guy that you both might have heard of, CD Cooley, who um, just incredibly yes. solid work. And uh, he did, you know, not so fast. And uh, he worked on Belia's script. He's like an incredibly uh, trailblazer in terms of follower stuff back in Oblivion and things. And um, he helped me, um, yeah, kind of move a lot of do the hardcore coding, which I just had no clue about, and to kind of realize stuff. But then there was this horrible thing where, <laughs> like, the whistle's a good example of this. Um, I originally just was like, is there any way we could stop combat between friendlies? You know, and like, there's a stop combat alarm, obviously, function in creation kit, and I just needed a way to deliver it. And CD Cooley had written the script that would do it. And uh, with a lot of empty functions and stuff, just in case we wanted to expand it. And uh, so I was mucking around with shouts, just like, would I say, you know, does the character, do I have the main character shout, quit it? You know, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then I think it was, yeah, we were mucking around with it, and I, I decided to make it into a whistle because then it would just work across all voice types. And then I just did a, a silent, like okay, a kind of more stealthy whistle, <laughs> <if you start laughs> and a kind of standing up whistle. But then he he was the one that was like you could um, maybe we could hop, we could like hijack into the quick command state you know through this, um, but we don't really know we couldn't work out a way to do it. And then I was like, well, could we control the aggression as well? And then we went back and forth and back and forth, and we started adding things together and trying to work out a system where it would work. But then what came with that was okay if you just whistle to Inigo and his aggression is the same state as your uh, your um, weapon state, because that's how he measures it. If everything's normal, he needs to respond just with a normal whistle. And that meant that I was suddenly recording 150 whistles. Just <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, just, just in case, so the player can go around spamming whistles, and like, you know, if I, and then I got a bit crazy. I think you go for and covered, like, part one of the Harry Potter reference, you know? Um, oh, God, in, then, in, the, in the college. Yeah, there's like loads oh, of silly ones brilliant. like that. That was brilliant. But it's like if you, but I, I did call in a sponsor's one because I think it makes you feel like you're actually whistling with him. So if you're on a farm and you whistle, he'll do the first part of Old McDonald's, but then you whistle again <laughs> and he'll do the next part. You whistle again and he'll do the final part, and that, and then it's like you've kind of made him complete the song and stuff. Or if you whistle at night when the stars are out, he'll he's got like a I think a three percent chance of doing close encounters. You know things. Like okay, that. <laughs> I am so glad you're saying this now because I gotta be honest with you. There are times when I'll whistle and I'll be talking and I'll hear him whistle and then I'll be like, "Did I recognize that?" And I, I'm like, or "Am I going crazy? Did I just?" And there's there's these moments when I find myself stopping, going, "Did I?" Just and then no, no, no. so it is. I am not going nuts. Well, that's that's hilarious. When you have those moments, go for. Sometimes I can't tell if you're just trying to be entertaining or if you're legitimately confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you in character right there? Well, some, with the Harry Potter one, I got straight away, and it was like it was like. I was trying not to sort of break character <laughs> too much, you know, like trying. But there are times when you hear it and you go, "No, I know that. I just can't remember why I know it." Is it was that deliberate? Did you, Should whistle, I know? I, did you ever on. whistle to him in the Bard's College? I don't think so. Now I well, guess go what's happening. Guess what's happening next episode? I think I think I, I did something quite pretentious there. I think I was like I can't remember what one it was, but I put some Rat Mananoff in there. But like, um, don't, don't, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I've got no no spoilers. <laughs> sorry, now. sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. No spoilers. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's interesting. I actually love your I love your commitment to variety in there um, because I think that's one of the things where that just makes the characters seem more realistic and more immersive is when you don't hear those repeated things and like the whistling was a was a great one is uh, listening especially with how like go for how much you use whistling I really got a, a feel for how much how many different whistles there are for uh, oh. for Inigo and it's fantastic when you do stuff like that like you were talking about that insane conversation you did at the end where it's all multi branching that's like dream scenario in a video game that's what we all hope for <laughs> but we're all like well no one would ever yeah. do that because that's too much work <laughs> no one's that well <laughs> yeah. it, it turns out it's really not worth it you know I mean because what happens is the just because of it's a flip of a coin you know people get the same response twice and they go oh, I've exhausted that topic and they never open up this conversation again that's it but right. what's interesting because of YouTube and stuff is they'll see other people get different conversations and it creates kind of water cooler moments, you know, where they're like, wait, no, wait, I, what, how did you do that? You know, uh, and I think Enigo's got that going for him. I think that's the only upside of that insanity. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all often a like, thing we go through in, in debating of how many you know random idols do we need, how many hellos do we need, et cetera. And oh, yeah. it often just comes down to if it's, uh, what are the chances that somebody's going to see that a second time? Um, and then we judge accordingly. But sometimes even when we know somebody's only going to see it once, I still am tempted to just be like, let's just do three, any three different versions anyway, because yeah. the, the thing with yeah. the Bethesda, the player base, I mean, we all do this ourselves is we play these games every few years. We just keep coming back yeah. and then we get a whole new experience. And those little moments like will stand out and be like, Oh, I've never heard him say that. And I think that like do what you've done with Inigo, you're going to have people just being blown away f for literal, I mean, for the next decade playing this mod, because especially with how long a tail these games have on them. I mean, people still play Morrowind and Oblivion today. So yeah. the, and with something with how well done Skyrim is and how many amazing mods there are to bring it up to the next level. I think even after Elder Scrolls six comes out, which could still be another half decade, uh, you're going to, Oh, have, it will you're, be. Oh, right. oh, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least. So you're going to still have people, even in that time frame, still coming back to experience Skyrim and experience Inigo. So then those things like, uh, all this, this extra effort, I don't think it's wasted. I think it's, I, it's, it may, it's a little insane. I'll agree with you there, but, uh, I think yeah, you, yeah. I think you will yeah. give people like memorable experiences. They'll never forget. And they'll always think of you and think of Inigo and it'll just, it's just, it's going to end up being worth it to them. It's definitely not wasted. Nope. And it's absolutely not wasted. The, the, you have actually set the bar for what can be done with followers. I mean, I don't actually think most game developers are going to reach that bar, not even close, but you've actually set the bar so high now that games companies That's like Bethesda that. are going <laughs> to have to take this into account from now on. Yeah, I think I think he occupies a space that was kind of not filled before, um, but the way that he does that is, like you say, it's, it's really silly. Um, and I, I, was, I said this in another interview I did recently, but, you know, if, when there's a lot of speculation, like I introduced the... Uh, any thoughts topic in 2013 it was in his first version and I had uh, um, a number of people have said oh, I wonder if Bethesda paid attention to that for their followers in Fallout 4 and stuff and a lot of mods have done it since but Inigo was in that vanguard of like there were a few mods doing it uh, something similar but the only reason that it works with Inigo is because he has about a thousand thoughts so, right sure so like so you're not going to just fire through all of Piper's hundred thoughts you know, and, you know, if there's a story here, we'll find it, whatever, again and again and again. It, it, again, it comes down to that commitment about, I've got to be okay with people not hearing anything. I've got to be okay with them asking his thoughts and saying, no, I've got nothing, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, because, because the conditions aren't, aren't right, so when they are right, then it's more mem memorable. That's, oh, absolutely. that's the, uh, yeah, that's the idea. Well, you definitely want a few cases where you don't win the uh, the, the lottery. I mean, that's standard standard uh, loot box mechanics yeah. in a way. <laughs> is, you know, you've got we're, we're we're getting primed to hit any thoughts just for the moments when we get the actual reward. You see, makes us want to do yeah. it more. Makes it feel more special. Yeah. But I am serious about um, Inigo. He's not just chained uh, hired the bar. I think he's changed the concept of followers for a lot of people myself included i i think future bethesda games especially but other games need to start considering the idea that the the followers the in-game followers should not just be there as you know someone to carry your stuff or maybe fight <laughs> for you but actually should should be 
self-contained little stories and personalities and make make you feel like they're actually people because that's what Inigo does. And, it, and I mean, if Bethesda could add even four or five characters like that to one of their games, yeah. I think it would make the game so much more memorable. Because for me, I mean, like the 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 interaction with Inigo is way more entertaining than his interaction with pretty much any of the in-game NPCs or any of the quests. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you, you've made it so that the actual NPCs, the followers in some ways are more important than the main quest in Skyrim. <laughs> I, I, I would say, I would say you've almost created like a virtual friend. Like you've, like you set up a situation yes. where you've got a, you've got an actual yeah. person. Like it feels like you're hanging out with a person that you get to interact with and see how they are enjoying the experience of Skyrim, which is just surreal. Yeah. That's that's the, that's actually yeah um, that's been observed a few times and that certainly has become um, a real driving uh, force behind some of my decisions as I realised what he was doing and what he's capable of. So I really made him so what, I really made him to fit the gaps in Skyrim's crazy code and to try and okay well followers don't do this very well so I'll have him talk about it. You know if you ask him about himself <laughs> he'll say I prefer the snake route. I, I don't really enjoy throwing myself off the cliff for no reason, you know, and uh, <laughs> you're sounding around all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, there's loads of, I try and fit him in, like, you know, to, I don't know, I think it'd be amazing if new Bethesda games had a little cabals that worked on a follower, you know, you know, this is, you know, followers, like five followers or whatever, you know, they were much more uh, detailed, that'd be fantastic. But a lot of the reason um, that Enigo's death continued the way I did it was to reinforce, um, what became a secondary narrative, which is that idea of almost having a second player in the game who might occasionally wink at you, but is for the most place, he's really in that game. Like, you know, if he gets yeah. hurt, yeah. he gets hurt, you know, but, but like he, you know, he, he's there kind of witnessing it all. Um, and he is your friend. And that's why I put in a lot of those very nervous. I put in a, a how are you doing? And I go, um, conversation, which then opens up a bunch of stuff where he asks you how you're doing. And, um, and that leads into quite some quite dark territory, potentially, but it's conversations that you should be able to have with a real friend. And I'm really glad I put that in there. It was a nightmare to write, and I was very nervous. I felt like, you know, if I got one bit wrong, then it could be... They have real-world, you know, implications, because uh, it talks about depression and grief and fear of failure and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there are a lot of people out there that don't have anyone to talk to, and if they're, like, thinking, like, Avenigo is this person they can hang out, and then... If they've lost someone in their life, even if it's a virtual, you know, facsimile of having that conversation, it can still be helpful, I think. Um, and, yeah, luckily, <laughs> luckily, it's been well received. And I've received a lot of um, emails thanking me for putting that in and, and stuff and saying it's helped them and the read videos done on it and stuff. So in a weird way, he accidentally became a bit of an emotional sport cat. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. God, yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, like I quite, like things like that were really to he he is your friend, and obviously the other I mean, the three questions I get well, there's loads of questions I get asked all the time. In the top three, it's always like you know when am I going to be able to marry and it go, <laughs> and I'm just I'm just not really interested in that. I think it's far more interesting for him to be the you know the person you go to when your marriage is like on the rocks and you just <laughs> like, you know talk about it and like you know chill out and go and do something that distracts you and like you know and. He's your mate. That's what it is. You know, it's a platonic friendship either way. Um, you, you said you said something else that actually that I think is really important. You said it's like having a second player character in game, and I think this is this is the difference between Inigo and other followers for me. Every other follower and indeed NPC in Skyrim feels like they are there to support the Dragonborn in his personal story. Inigo makes me feel like I'm there to support his story. It's like he's got a story. He's got a reason to be there. And I'm actually helping him. Not in that sort of I'm doing this for the quest reward kind of way. But actually, like, he is the second player. And yeah. he has he's playing the game from a different perspective. But I think that's what games need to start doing. They need to start putting... Um, followers, NPCs in the game where you genuinely believe that that, even though you know it, you know it, you know it's right. not real, but you genuinely believe at some level your your imagination lets you run with the idea that this character is in the game with their own goals and is moving around doing kind of what you're doing. 
Yeah, yeah, I would, an adventure. I would much have preferred if like that was the direction they went with Fallout 4 is give us like three or four really highly detailed companions. Because I felt at a certain point, you know, there, I think there were 13 that shipped with the base game, something crazy like that. Uh, yeah, and then you get yeah. a couple more in the DLC. And I felt by the time I got into one of them and, and realized that they were basically a copy-paste gamified system, I just then started treating them like that. I stopped right. treating them like interesting characters. Like, oh, I guess I unlocked their perk. Time for the next one. And then it just became a checklist, and it really dehumanized them. That's the problem, them. With, that way yeah. of, uh, that's yeah. the problem with that way of unlocking friendship, because the fr- real friendships aren't based on that. And where, like, you know, that is, I had exactly the same experience. I really liked, when I first met Piper... I really, really enjoyed what they were doing. I loved the new direction with it, and you get that really nice, fancy customization when she's outside the, you know, outside Demon City and stuff. And um, I really liked, I liked the voice actor. I liked everything about it. And as soon as I saw the mechanics underneath, and as soon yeah. as I was like, okay, she liked the She okay. liked that. She liked yeah. this. Yeah. Oh that's... god, I, just, I was totally. I mean, you gamified friendship in a really horrible, tacky way, and. Um, but also the, the 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 story with her and most of the characters is just a little. It's not even a story sort of thing. It's just like you're doing things they like, and therefore they get to. I think Nick's probably the exception. Actually, Nick yeah, has an actual, true. especially with the DLC with um, Far Harbor. Far but Harbor. Nick has. There is a story there. It's not. It's not. Not even close to as good as as Indigo. But at least with Nick, I sometimes felt like. There was there was something going on there, whereas with the other characters, yeah, they they're there for you to. They can carry a lot of the crap if you don't have salvage beacons <laughs> installed. To carry your yeah, <laughs> and you 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 your main focus in some ways is to unlock their perk, which is a terrible. Yeah. There's a, it's, a, it's an appalling goal right. with NPCs. Yeah, I almost I almost wonder if it's not worth it, not worth putting in those unlocks. Even though like unlocks are really fun. Like don't get me wrong, they're a fantastic gamify gamification system. I love getting new unlocks. They give me the same trigger dopamine as everybody else. But yeah. maybe it's not the right place for them just because you risk de- you risk turning your character into what feels like a game system instead of uh yeah. a, a well, friend. For for any go, I used a bunch. I use a bunch of because because I'm I, I have no idea about coding. Speaking to to um, vastly superior beings on that level. <laughs> um, so why what, what I learned quite early on, I mean, I explained this to why I was doing the Sadie Cooley, and he's like, I don't know why you would do that, but yeah, it's kind of genius in a kind of um, silly way. But um, what I do is I enable X markers that are in a location, and those become his memories in certain ways. And then I also have quests that run alongside the player quest that match that record if he was there with you uh, on his supported quest and he'll always come if he changes his memories of those events it's trying to give him a memory so there's not an actual you don't know if you've unlocked something until you know and and it'll just be in the sometimes it's like if he was with you when you went to it's not all supported yet you know the major skill isn't supported and um you know the dark brotherhood isn't supported but a lot of it is supported um and these little X markers are just like enabled and then I can check them in conditions and that just switches out. Like if he'll just say something, a silent line, if he's with you while you're hunting hags for the companions, you know, he'll remember that moment that he was with you. And then that will be referenced throughout the rest of his dialogue occasionally. Like I maybe put eight little references in, like I just change things slightly. Yeah. And those little touches, I think, are far more rewarding for me. Um, like if you go into Frostflow Lighthouse, or is that a place with the tourist then then the cellar? Go for it. I can't remember. The li- <laughs> I remember. The, the, I do remember the lighthouse. I don't remember the name. I'm terrible. Right. So like if you if you go, if you go in, just a really simple example that um, some people might have heard is uh, to illustrate this is if you go in there, little silent line fires. If you're in there, a little X marker called you know and it goes here. You know gets uh, flipped to enabled. Um, and then the next time you're in a Falmer area, he'll he'll say a once only line where he'll say this smells like that horrible light horse house we explored, you know. And it's just it's just reminding the player that he was there with you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and and it's in a totally the, different area. And the it's first like mission totally I did thing. with him that happened. The first mission I did. Yeah. He, he, and and he said it like early. two chapters <laughs> later. He said like, um, yeah. oh, this reminds me of the first mi- time we went out to that bandit. And I'm like. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the so your, your method, your method with the X markers is, 
it seems genius in the sense that it makes it easier for you to visualize of where you have done that because yeah. one of the problems with so you could also do something like that with quest stages like talking about the technical level and that's what i tend to do because i'm a oh, yeah. i'm a spreadsheet guy um so like i do but, quest stages as well yeah, <laughs> but then i was I, I would I, forget that i would actually i would actually have either global variables or quest variables and set them because I'm, <laughs> I'm a code guy oh by the way you, you did say you said like like vastly superior i i'm gonna just you two dwarf me in um modding ability just 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 <laughs> putting out there the, there's there's three areas i know nothing about and i'm terrible about uh, and i wish i was better at them one is world building i'm, I'm really bad at actually making areas that, well, i've never even i've done like one basic tutorial questing and honestly that i think is very underrated for difficulty people just oh don't understand it's it's you know like like it's because you're trying to deal with the human element of what people are going to do yeah. but also dialogue so those three areas i mean those three is i've got no experience in and and but i also because i've had a look inside the creation club and i've and because i am a coder and i know what it's like when you're building things for people where you've just got that unknown x factor all the time right. of what people are going to do that so i'm i mean i'm a coder and that's what I, if you look inside my mods, it's probably pretty obvious. I've got a code background rather than say modeling. If you look at any of my models, you'd be very, very quickly, <laughs> quickly aware of the fact that I don't have a model. Recon armor. <laughs> if you open it up with NIF scope and you know anything about 3D modeling, you're just going to scream, pull your hair out and run <laughs> out of the room. It's awful. I mean, because I know nothing about 3D modeling, but I'm the sort of person who just something gets an idea in my head. And I think you'll both recognize this. I get an idea in my head and I just keep hitting things with a hammer until I eventually get something working. Um, well, that's and, that's how all modding is done. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But yeah, so well, the, you, I just want to say- You take headed to be a modder. That's the, that, is the, that is the main thing you need is take head in this, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like, like you've, got that, you've got that thing of, of an idea and you will not be able to rest until you've got the idea working. And you, you know there are moments when you should stop. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Oh, man. I'm sure that was about uh, 10,000 hours ago, right, right Gary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah. The, one of the things with the, um, with, that Inigo has shown me is – that I, I often get trapped in this macro versus micro focus on my mods. So with Sims Elements, I went very macro. I went with, I get to design a system that has a big impact across a wide uh, swath of gameplay. And I can work on something for a long time and it'll have a big, broad impact. And I often find myself when I start working on things like quests and dialogue that I'm like, this is so micro. This is like, what, you know, a lot of people are never going to experience this. But those little micro moments that you invest all those time in, after you add enough of those, it has the same impact or even bigger impact than the macro systems. Way bigger. Yeah, yeah way bigger, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Which is, which is weird. Thing, those are moments. Yeah, that's it. That's what, that's, what, um, <laughs> that's what people always remember. But it's those tiny little things. And okay, if you, if you do this one thing, so I'll, I'll always, I'll, I'm always on the lookout with any go like, if there's, if you're, it's almost like psychology. You're kind of going, is, what's a player likely to do in this moment? And then if I can push back against that or show that I've acknowledged that in one way, even if it's just once, you know, then you know you've won. Like that, because it never happens. You know, <laughs> in in these games. Um, so to have, you know, not nearly enough anyway. So if you can suddenly, if you whistle to Enigo at a certain time and he's got a very appropriate response for that, or if you pick up an object, I do a lot of stuff with like, the Z object, you know, um, stuff. So like if you're carrying objects around and stuff, they'll have different things depending on certain. <laughs> you're yeah. in. Are you and, entertaining uh, yourself or something like that? Yeah. But, yeah, he does that when I'm like crafting it. as well. He does that. He makes comments when I'm crafting. Are you okay, my friend? Yeah. Oh man. Have you, have <laughs> well, you, no, that's, he, that's, uh... that's a mistake. But yeah, that's a mistake because there's actually there's a basically the way I did that was like I didn't. This has been fixed now. But um, when you're crafting something, he's got individual things for all the different crafts. So if you're doing alchemy, he's got alchemy lines. You know, if you're you know all that stuff, yeah. enchanting. But if you're on a seat that is from a mod that isn't actually listed, he just thinks he's you're sitting. So mm, okay. he can't tell what you're using. 
So he thinks you're sitting in a dangerous area, and that's why he's like, "Are you having some kind of breakdown?" With me? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, he's like, "This is like, I know, you know, he's like, I know it's a nice chair, but you have to leave it behind, you know." And you're actually just there, you know, using a, a dig site or something. And that's why that happens. Right? So is that what? That... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's well, really no, funny. I actually quite yeah. like that because it kind of it can it's there's this, this, this strange comedic moment where he's I feel like he's <laughs> mocking me. <laughs> Yeah, that's almost one of those. That, I mean, that's one of the joys of the Bethesda games, where you have all these dynamic systems coming together, and then sometimes they're just these hilarious moments that came about that you couldn't have planned that are fantastic. And yeah. if you went too polished with it, you'd lose those. And so it sounds like that. That's yeah, exactly. actually that's actually one of those like little side benefits: the fact that there's limitations on uh, on Skyrim where you can't detect everything, which is kind of cool. Definitely. Definitely. I just love the fact that you never know what anything is going to do 100 percent 100 percent of the time. <laughs> And you got, I mean, I think as soon as you embrace that, <laughs> you know, your life's a lot less uh, stressful. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just try and, I just try and think about all those things. I do things like, okay, what if there's a dead body in your house? Um, so I know that <laughs> I had to come up with a line. I had to come up, I had to come up with a line for that because I had to come up with a bunch of lines for that because I'd never considered it. And then I thought it happened. And right at that point, Inigo had, you know, basic detect, like when he's in a sandbox mode, if you said like, you can relax, then he's walking around in part of his packages that he recognizes dead bodies. Um, but it felt like it should be different if it's in your house, you know, it felt like the lines should be different. Right. And then I was like, okay, well, they should be different if you're in a town, they should be different. But, but very often who's, you know, very few people will say to Enigo, just relax here in the middle of the town. But just in case they did, like I had to end up coming up with a few that worked in different areas <laughs> and stuff. And that, you know, um, You've got to get that on a T-shirt, though. <laughs> Sat wondering what would happen if you go find a dead body in your house. So just like <laughs> it's, 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 the, the the weirdness of that thought, you, you have actually had to come up with a plan for that. Now, now, Gary, do well, you? I was like, can... Sorry, sorry. Can't... Oh, I was just saying, you you do the voice for Inigo yourself, right? Yes. So that is one of the things that I think has uh, in my this is in my theory is that that has enabled you to do the amazing job you've done. Um, and I think I would love to see more people who design companions do that because then every time you have a random idea or like a little couple extra lines, you don't have to trouble anyone yeah. else. Like that's yeah. a, it's a big problem yeah. with doing quest mods and stuff is we tend to, uh, we don't want to overburden these voice actors because they're giving us their time. They're being kind and doing all this. Uh, and we don't want to just throw them like, here's three random lines we need. So it tends to be then we have to build up a, a fair amount, give them some time. Whereas whenever you have a random idea, like what would happen if there was a dead body in the house? You can literally just go open audacity and take care of the problem, which is right, yeah. which is fantastic. It would well, probably help if, if you had the voice actor on like speed dial or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. I got, yeah, you got to be like a it now because I'm actually, I'm actually like I'm, I'm working with other voice actors now um, uh, for version three, and I've had to. <laughs> um, there are people who just get so sick and tired of me trying to do a million different voices. Um, but I, <laughs> for that, it's, it's that reason. It's, that's exactly the reason why I do so many. Like I'll, I'll, I I've voice most of the male characters, and I just try and like make myself fit, sound different as possible. Mainly the ones that are um, that have a lot of lines. So I really. Uh, that are really uh, full, fully fleshed characters in their own right. And in fact, I mean, the slight kind of preview here is not, you know, um, but in, in Enigo version three, Enigo can get his own follower briefly. And um, <laughs> trying, to work out how, trying to work out how that works. And what he's really, he's really, the other followers, they have to be able to be swapped in and out. Um, and like, so you can, you know, on one on one mission, you may choose to take this person. On another mission, you may choose to take this person with you, but one of them has to come with you. And they have to sneak when Enigo sneaks, and they have to... So the player can just control Enigo, and then the other followers do what Enigo's doing. I think it's the easiest way to deal with it. Do they um, whisper when they sneak? Yes, they do. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh my yeah. God, thank you. I cannot believe... I cannot believe until your mod, until Inigo, it hadn't actually sort of... I hadn't really registered... How bad it is that the NPCs don't whisper when the, when you're sneaking. Even the thieves guild. Yeah. <laughs> Inigo has ruined every other NPC. Partly because of that. If you're playing a stealth character and you've played with Inigo, you can't actually take any other NPC <laughs> out with you without wanting to scream. 
<laughs> but but that's that's the thing. Sorry, just going back to um, the the voice acting thing now because I'm having to cast and listen back to stuff. I've had a bit of trouble, you know, where because of my previously discussed insanity, um, <laughs> I've had a certain character who, who has a few, well, many hundred lines um, that you know can be a, a part-time companion as well. Like I've, you know, people have dropped out twice on that role. And Oof. I sort of let, just left me. It was very, like, you know, very kind of pleasant. The relationship's been fine, you know, talking back and forth. But they're just like, okay, I've had enough. I can't, I don't see why you need to do all these different things. You surely have enough. And it's actually left me hanging in a place where they've made all of the work previously completely redundant because I need, you know, we're yeah. working through a script. Yeah. So that's like wasted two months of development, you know. And I mean, luckily I've got some very good voice actors I can trust. But I've, I've learned to, on the first sheet of every script, I have a list of agreeing, disagreeing, unsure, yes, no, whispers. Like, as long as they get that done, then at least if they bail out, then I can construct something that will work out of those right. you know, general phrases. Yeah, we've started, doing nightmare, the, yeah. we've started doing the same thing. We have a spreadsheet of uh, what we just call the template of lines that we need for a character to function, and it's a lot of those, like yeses, nos, yeah. hellos, idols, so that way it's like, all right, as long as we can get this sheet recorded, that character will be usable for most things. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's very it's very tricky. It's very tough because I mean, I, I think as well. It, it's just again, it's that kind of thing. People don't really they look at any girl and they kind of think, okay, well, I've only heard this is player speaking. You know, I've heard two thousand lines. I've been playing with him for a couple of years, um, and they don't really understand about you know those those other four thousand lines under that and that the work ethic that's involved within that. And I don't want to I don't want to impose that on anybody else, but. It certainly does to to maintain the world space and the quest that I want to do um, in the same thing, in the same kind of style as Inigo himself. Almost like a, what would Inigo look like if he was a world space in a quest? You know, um, that's what I've been trying to do. Um, there needs to be a level of those things going on. There needs to be a, quite a lot of dialogue uh, because of different branching things. And if they're doing this, and if they're doing that, and uh, yeah, it's just a, it's too much for some people. You know, they're just like I don't. I've worked on other modern projects. I normally go in. I'm 200 lines in. This is where I normally would it would be over. Why are we still going? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, yeah, but what if you? What if there's a dead body? And what if there's a dead body in your home? You know? <laughs> uh, we we just had that recently with uh, some some friends. I had do some voice acting for something, and I was like, hey, would you mind recurring a few lines? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then I send them a script, and it's like 300 lines. They're like, okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, and recording voice lines actually takes quite a lot of time as well and and people just yeah. think you just you get those 300 lines and quickly run through them but um probably they've done like five or six takes on them and you yeah. know just so it's it is i can i can say it's quite demanding and if you do every when you do the voice lines do you actually just rattle them off like first time and get it right because it because you're the one no. that's come up with it no, you don't. Okay. No, no I'll, 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 I'm terrible. I'll give myself 20 takes of each line. Oh, I'll geez. do like, you know, and then I'll piece together like the best, the one that had the kind of most interesting tone or whatever. And um, yeah, uh, and some, sometimes, sometimes certain lines, yeah, I'll, it's very often the ones I throw out at the end of a session. I'll normally record 50 lines in a session and then I'll do five minutes of mucking around. And, and those are the best those, ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those you know, you because I've done this a few times for people, and it's because they give you a line, and you, and it's like we want you to say, "So you are here again," and so you you get there, "So you are here again," and you you get to trying to sound all heroic, and at the end of it, you're like, "Oh, so you're here again," and you know, and you and that's the one that <laughs> exactly, actually yeah. sounds the best, the one where you're just like, "Oh bloody hell, are you here <laughs> again?" Like the yeah. Features that with the right thing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just burn them out until it's really natural, and the script doesn't yeah. exist anymore in their head. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I I wonder, do, I, there are things in the mod. Like I spoke about this before briefly, but there was a. I realized that obviously if people are teleporting in a go. I really want people to use that as a tool initially, potentially. And I do things with that that teleport in my own game. Um, and it was very important that that was a thing for the. That's got hundreds of responses. Um, and if you teleport him into combat. He has lines, just like, <clears throat> you know, things like that. And, oh, and all okay, that don't tell me, because I've not uh, done that yet. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there was a line when I was recording, it was like, first I confuse you, then I kill you. And it was a silly, just a silly, and I go bark, you know. Um, but I said it the wrong way around. 
and then went, oh, wait, get the way around. And then that's the one that got in, you know? And it was because he was confused as he was, you know, mocking yeah. them. It's, uh, it, just, it tickled me, and that, that's the one that ended up in there, yeah. That's awesome. Oh. But yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be a, a struggle. It sounds like you are a, an obsessive perfectionist with uh, be, pulling off all this. So then you, I could see how you could end up in that rut of 20 lines. Whereas when we hand off voice actor scripts, I know it takes long. Like what you were saying, Gopher, it's not just a matter of just like going down and doing the recordings. They also have to read all of the uh, the information we bio, give them yeah. around it. Like here's the, yeah, they have, here first they have to study up the character bio. And then like when we give a script, it'll be to one side, it'll be here's the line that was just spoken to you. Uh, and the other side will be here's the context. Here's some you know here's what's going through your head so there's like a lot of auxiliary reading they have to put it all together but if you're in the situation where you are gary you know the entire story around it so it probably is like flooding your mind with wait wait what what would his headspace be in and then you could really go down the deep end with that yeah i mean i was i was recently i worked with an amazing voice actress recently on a part that was kind of small but very important i mean i say small i think it's got like 500 lines or something but like 400 lines (laughs) But um, but but yeah, that was I didn't actually give her, I didn't give this actress like I give her barely any direction really I just kind of give her a rough I give her bio I give her a really detailed backstory and I just wanted to see what she'd do and uh, we had I, I kind of give her like okay you could tell by the scenes what was happening you know it's like within the context of that you know and um, I trusted her enough you know and I wouldn't have done this with just anyone but I trusted her enough I'd seen her kind of doing some stuff on YouTube before. I trusted enough to let her fly, and yeah, she came up with stuff that I never would have done, and that's amazing. That's that's even better because I think it it can feel like I'm this kind of overbearing control freak sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really I'm just like okay, only if you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but like she, but this is that was a great example of someone who came in and um, yeah, like obviously uh, I, I had to go back in and say oh, I'd like a couple of retakes on this one and a couple of retakes on that one, but. There, there was. She added so much to the character. Like she made the character like um, completely. Um, and I think if I was micromanaging it all the time, I would be denying myself the opportunity to find those moments with people. Sure. Um, so it's a delicate, yeah, it's a delicate tightrope to walk. Yeah, I, I was just poking fun when I said you were obsessed with it because I think it's you got to have a little bit of no, that in your genes just <laughs> in order to in order to stick with a mod for this long. You got to have a little bit of that. Because it's uh, yeah. it's uh, clearly a labor of love at this point, like to go this long on it. So yeah, our, it's it's, uh, it's an obsession at this point, especially because I'm not really releasing anything. I'm not doing it for the views or right, right. The downloads. I don't talk to anyone. I don't get the release buzz. I don't get any of that. It's been I mean, my last release was what 2000, late 2016. Well, I'll tell you, I tell so you what, you've I, got two people here who would happily help you promote in advance <laughs> when you're ready for. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, cause that, that is actually that. one of the, that's one of the bummers about, um, the, the mod scene and that uh, I think a lot of people have tried to tackle this and there's no, there's no great way to approach it because of how, how hard it would be to track of keeping up with all the different mods that end up getting big updates. A lot of times outside of yeah. a mod's initial release and it's big public and like, you know, you get all these, uh, you know, people like over who check them out and show them off. Uh, and then the, you know, the hot files on the various sites they're on and then that's it. And then after that, you could spend a year doing a crazy major update and then it's up all to you to market it. Otherwise it just kind of, nobody knows about it. And yeah, except for your yeah. hardcore followers, yeah. uh, so that's always yeah. Like, I'm very lucky in that regard. Yeah, like I, I, I don't really do. I mean, the website wasn't created by me. The Friends of Enigo website, uh, uh, lovely girl Carol, just that was her donation to me. She was just like, "I'll just do this for you," and um, you know, I provided artwork for it, and I just hand over stuff like that. The Facebook fan page, like a few thousand members or whatever, and it's all just totally run by the community and. Um, yeah, I just funnel through. I talk to people who run those things, and and they do a great job of keeping the hardcore fans interested, and talking, and they you know they, sh- they swap stories and stuff and art. They do there's a lot of fan fiction about Inigo, and there's a lot of kind of you know people do art and even sculptures of Inigo and stuff. It's really weird and awesome. Oh, that's um, awesome. But yeah, I, I'm I'm very I'm very hands off with all that. I don't like, the whole thing for me. As soon as I embarked on version three, was like I because it it become like an obsession. I'd come home from work. And I'd be straight onto the Nexus and just hit and refresh, going, okay, which question are we going to have to answer for the most <laughs> time? You know, and it was like all, it was like a second full time job. And uh-huh. I, I, I talked to um, uh, Nicole, uh, a girl in there who helped me, um, helped me at the time. She runs it now, uh, the Nexus thing. She just basically feels all that. And a couple, with a couple of other um, fans and, and steadfast people who've been there for a long time. And I just said, I'm going to back away. I need to work on this. 
I can't be there. And I know it's going to mean that I'm going to get told I'm dead uh, every day. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to get told that my mod is dead and everything. But um, that has allowed me to do the work I need to do in silence <laughs> and peace. You know, um, more or less, I still obviously get all those emails every day. Yeah. Um, but those, they're easier to ignore. I just kind of back away from what I can. It's it's yeah. a, having a good community really does like take the workload off. Oh yeah, you. I mean, really you can really see don't. it with yours too, Gopher. You got like whenever I watch one of your live streams, you got a couple of great mods oh. who are quick to answer questions and just make people feel welcome. Oh yeah, you've got amazing you f- community. Yeah. My mod, my moderators team. I, I, I could. I don't even know half of the stuff. In fact, I don't even know a tenth of the stuff they do for me, and I, I couldn't even function. Uh, but there's a lot of it. There's actually more than just the moderator team. There are people who help out more or less everywhere people come along to the comment section of my videos and just field questions when people say oh go for can you help me with this and someone will come forward and say oh right no um you know and they they will they will do it so it's like i almost feel like my channel is mine in name only they <laughs> it's you know it's there they, it's some the same is true on a lot of my mods now because i don't i don't have time to check my mod pages as you say, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous how, how, you know, how much time you can spend on them. But there are still always people willing to help out. So it's not even, it's, it's not even just my community. The modern community in general just looks after itself. And I, and I love that. Uh, uh, ditto. And it's, it's hard for me to believe that it happens. Like, I feel so guilty every day that I'm not fielding these questions. Because I, I think about like what you were just talking about, uh, Gary, with the fact that you would go back. You used to go through and you'd refresh all the time and try and answer the questions for people. And that's what I would that's what I did like the first five, six months after some settlements came out. And then it just came to a point where I was like, okay, I'm spending like 10 hours a week doing this. Like that could all be yeah. invested in bug hunting and making new features and things that nobody else can do. Like I can't sleeping, you know, sleeping. Yeah. Uh, so that I, it's Don't like be a, ridiculous. Uh, who has time for sleep? Uh, but th- but so every once in a while I go back and I look at the comment sections uh, on the mod page or on the forums and simsettlements.com and I just like feel this guilt of like man I like I I want to help these new people the same way I yeah. used to help the new people. And then somebody else will come in and just take care of it. And there are just so yeah. many passionate fans in the modding community who just like, they want, they, I think they get it. They want to see other people having a good time uh, the way they did. They got help maybe from us early on and now they're paying it forward. And it's just so cool yeah. to see. Yeah. That paying it forward really, mentality. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, and with, it's really, it's because it might sound like quite a, a strange thing to say, but it, Seeing that happen around um, Enigo kind of really gave me a bit of hope for the world in a weird way. <laughs> like there was a, to see all these people come together because it can be a very toxic place, especially for a mod author. You know, you I mean you just you're opening yourself up to yeah. you're in a unique position as a mod author where the only way once you release something that's it. Not that's not it released really. That's not it over. That's your journey over. You know, you're expected to maintain, listen to all these bug reports that aren't really bug reports, just people not understanding how the game works. Or like, and then the only way to really engage with the people who have genuine issues is to open yourself up to that negative stuff as well. Right. Um, <clears throat> and just see like what you were describing there. You know, these people coming around and just helping each other out and just sharing that information. And when your community reaches a size where it can do that, you know, comfortably, and the same faces pop up again and again, and uh, helping, it's just I'm so grateful for that, and it's amazing. I mean, the fact that Enigo even became popular at all. I mean, when I released him, it was like. A tiny group of people were, were like okay this is cool i don't really know what you're doing here but it, we like it um and then a lot of people would just look at him and just make snap judgment and tell me he should be female how many lines should he have or <laughs> does he have okay you could easily should you could easily female? get a girl yeah yeah you could easily get a girl to do to redo your lines no follower will ever no follower will ever be popular who's male um if he's because he shouldn't what? be that color <laughs> wait, 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 i'm sorry like, i'm sorry I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to draw. I still I, get I, them occasionally. I can't, yeah. I can't yeah. get past that. Why can a follower not be popular for bit? What? Well, I think well, it's, it's like I think it's the I, I think it's the lovers lab theory. <laughs> it's like uh, if you yeah 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 yeah. 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 The, 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 big, the most hardcore fans, I think, take this beyond friend simulator. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I've seen some pretty scary fan art. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh God! Oh but, God! Now I've 
not for fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put, I'll flash some of that uh, fan art up on screen. <laughs> Is that, are we talking Inigo fan art? Like, oh, yeah, well, I know. I no, no, no. Get that out of my brain. Get that out of my brain. <laughs> No. You're making it worse. You keep you keep talking about it. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, can't stop. Can't stop. <laughs> no, but they, they, to see when you you know you're doing all that and you're 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 seeing all this stuff um, coming up. People, when you start out, I was just told everything I'd done was I'd done was wrong. Essentially, the people who'd never used them, and there were whole hate threads against him who'd never used them, never tried them. Um, he's totally dumb. He doesn't speak in the third person. You know, obviously, obviously, his speech is cultural, not racial. You know, and like all those right. things I was doing were like really putting people's backs up. They were like, no, this is the way that a Khajiit should be, and this is the way a follower should be. And because of, yeah, I think Inigo kind of, I don't know, um, I don't want to say conceited or whatever, but I think he attracts a certain caliber of player, a certain type of person <laughs> who really gets into him. I think a, a certain a, a, you have to be a more thoughtful and considered player. You have to be more invested in the world in that way. Approach it in a certain way to really get Inigo and to kind of to really appreciate him. I think in a certain way, and that you have to be interested that, in his personality rather than how he looks in a thong bikini. Is what you say? <laughs> exactly. Well, yes, but far less eloquently. Yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly. I think I think what you're um, describing is something that Bethesda has probably been battling a lot that is is a problem for whenever you're dealing with a beloved franchise is that you're almost forced yeah. to pigeonhole into certain stereotypes because that's what players who remember it with nostalgia expect and yep. then what ends up happening is that in order to placate people who would complain about that they and we've had to do this in some of our writing too and it's a bummer that we have to do it but then you're almost forced to like heavy-handedly explain things that should have been able to be yeah, explained with subtlety yeah. because you're like all right i got to acknowledge this this fact that's a little different than what they're used to and you shouldn't have to yeah. uh, but unfortunately I, I i think this is just like part of the part of the medium is that you're going to always be dealing with people who are uh who are coming oh, at it. It definitely it comes to the territory. It definitely yeah. comes to the territory. And what, but that's what almost what I'm kind of most proud of about Enigo is that there's enough, he showed that there's enough people who really care about the work itself and saw past that to get him to, I think he's like number two or something um, on the Nexus in terms of a standalone follower. And like, it's all just, it's him and a bunch of girls, you know? Right. That's, that's, <laughs> they're kind of right, you know? Well, so if, it, if it wasn't it, a if it wasn't a Khajiit, you probably would be down there pretty far. I think. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly think true, I think yeah. Khajiit gets past some of the barriers of the male female problem. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Oh God. There's a hierarchy yeah, actually, there. I always end up with Khajiit followers for some reason, and it's not deliberate. I don't know. Yeah, but that was one of the reasons I think people were trying to get Inigo to go with you. I think yeah, you, uh, yeah, because of Carjo and Richard. Yeah. And. Uh, your obvious love for it. I, and I remember there was like a couple of episodes with Richard where it was starting. You'd just have Carjo sitting in a seat eating breakfast behind you and you were looking out over the LA Bay or whatever and just chatting away, uh, what, wherever that is. And um, yeah, the comments were all just like, if Enigo was there, he'd be telling, he'd be talking to you. I was like, yeah, he'd be embarrassing. Me. I wouldn't want him talking right now. Go for a talk. And, you know, I'd be like, oh my God, how am I going to condition that out? Like, you know. Um... <laughs> for, for Skyrim Special Edition, you are actually the top follower mod. Um, I, I'm looking under. I'm, I'm looking under the mods, followers, and companions. The only one that's <laughs> higher than Inigo is the amazing follower tweaks mod. It's not an actual follower oh, okay, mod. Okay. But, but behind oh, okay. that is Sophia. All right. Okay. Then, she was in the lead for a long time. Yeah. But it's, yeah. maybe she is in normal edition. But yeah, this yeah. is for the for the. I, oh, it's oh, you're neck and neck actually. It's nineteen point yeah. seven thousand versus nineteen point five. Woof. That's that's well, awesome. I mean, and, and yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a massive deal, but it's a massive deal that he's there at all. Like he's in the top like ten, I think, because he's so different from everybody else there, and that I think that speaks to the community kind of supporting him for who he is, not on a whim, like not just because he was, you know, some kind of superficial thing about him. Right. Which I think can happen is a subset of people who like followers, and it's all just they'll download them and try them, and they're disposable because they'll just have vanilla voices, you know. And it's like, what's the body type like? How beautiful is the face? <laughs> How big is the sword? That's it, you know. That's the follower, right. that's it. and uh, you know, that's it. And there's, those followers will never really um, get that high, but there's people. There are people who only play with those type of followers, really. 
Sure. Well, yeah. I think a lot, a lot of folks are conditioned on the everybody's, you know, most followers are just a Lydia, which is just, uh, you know, I might as well, if yeah. I'm going to have a pack mule, it should be the prettiest pack mule I can get. But I think yeah. that's because like Bethesda themselves and maybe some mod um, authors, because Bethesda did this, underestimate the player base constantly, the, what the player base are interested in yeah. and what they can handle. Inigo does not um underestimate the player in fact it, it assumes the player is clever thoughtful paying attention and also uh, I don't, patience the wrong word but willing to um yeah. slow <laughs> down don't <clears throat> yeah you know. so and i think i think that's i think for me one of the one of the reasons it's such a good mod is is it really doesn't treat me like I'm a, a brainless moron, <laughs> it, it it introduces a character that I can get to know, um, and it just assumes that I would be interested in knowing it as well. It's it's it just yeah. because he acts like a normal person, and so you know it's I like I like it when when games and mods just treat the player base with with respect so and yeah, exactly. don't just... I really appreciate that too. Yeah, it's very important. It's not done enough, and especially. Since, I don't know. In a lot of games, they're just it's the incessant hand holding, and yeah. um, the first you know hour or two of, of when you're yeah. your experience, and you're like, okay, I, I got that the first time, you know. And it's a shame, but I get why it's there. I totally understand why it's there, you know. But I'm I'm less forgiving than you, then, because I don't get what. Look, I understand they think the player base needs hand holding, and I know there's actually there's a there's a quite a lot of people on the internet who are very negative. Like, oh, well, people are stupid. People need <laughs> the hand holding. No, actually, yeah. people people are actually a damn sight smarter and a damn sight nicer than the average person um, yeah. thinks on the internet, and. If you provide, and we keep seeing this with games actually, say, breaking the mold and making life a little difficult, like Kingdom Come Deliverance, or adding tons of dialogue, like Vampire, and there being a, 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 quite a lot of people in, willing to engage with it. It's not, you know, I mean, Kingdom Come Deliverance was a massive success, even though it it pretty much it went against every single solitary. Um, is it is it fair to say it's a trope that people are stupid? You know, like that kind of mentality. That <laughs> yeah. um, it went against it and and proved that you know people aren't generally. Speaking. Yeah, and I think Divinity Original Sin Two did a version of that as well. In many ways, you know, in terms of just letting the player loose and and there was you know there's a basic kind of tool set at the start, and then you just very naturally acquire. Hang on, I can do this, you know, and I can do that, and I. Um, but I know I really mean that I can understand the point of view. I don't agree with it, but I understand. I can understand how the money has come to that conclusion. Like that, that's what needs to be done. Like you know, just because they're looking at figures, and if we had the tutorial, does you know this? I don't think it's necessary. I think you're right, um, but I understand how we've got there. And it's a shame. I well, think, I think I think, I think a thing, lot of the tutorial stuff is uh, it's a shortcut. Um, like so, it's so for yeah. example, I I, re I rely a lot on pop ups and shortcuts mostly just because there's not a lot you can do with the interface without getting the script extender involved, and I find yeah. it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a handicap, and doing it the correct way, doing it naturally. Like I think you've you've captured that with Indigo of slowly integrating the things normally in the game world that the player might not stumble upon automat like naturally as you introduce those slowly over time in natural ways, and I think that's an art, and I think it's hard, and that's why people don't do it with games. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to pop up a button that says press y to counter attack right. like it's definitely. it's less about the, it's less about the audience and the player base being dumb and and more about the fact that the developer has to actually yeah. get clever to make it work and that's what you've done with indigo yeah. you've been clever and you same is true with sim settlements though you've you, a lot of it now i mean i've i've had some conversations with you king f but I've really gone in there very blind. I've not read as much as I should have read, and I'm just mm -hmm. making it up as I go along. And I'm not having that much difficulty for for a mod that is, let's face it, stupendously complicated. So <laughs> I, I think it's just same experience with some settlements. I couldn't believe because I, I went in and I thought I'll install this, but I'm not going to get. I won't do anything tonight because it's, it's obviously going to be really dense and really complicated. And I'll, you know, and I'll take some time and I'll read some stuff up and then I'll, and, and, but three hours later, I was totally sucked in and things were working. It was all fine. I had followed it absolutely fine just in game. You know, I'd, it was, it was brilliantly designed in that way. 
Well, it's, um, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's hard yeah, to do because so we have a lot of restrictions on what we can do in the in the engine. Yeah, as far as like you're dealing teaching with people. so many variables. It's insane. Yeah. Like the stuff that you all the all the options that you've got there are just mind blowing. I just wonder how many of those options that you're going down. It's like are these all a result of direct? Are the how many of those options came, you know, naturally as you were designing it, or would, like being able to kind of the different uh, the build limits and stuff like that obviously you think okay i'm going to need to do that but it must have been quite a realization at the, t- the moment you realized you needed to add that like you're like oh yeah like obviously or did you just know straight away obviously i mean it sounds obvious now yeah but when it started to get so big um and some of the settlements can grow massive uh, massively um so many of those options are just genius actually so some of the options end up are like a, a product of necessity. It was just like, all right, this has to, we need this because of problem X. I also found that with Sims Elements in particular, there's a split in the player base of how people like to play the game. Of uh, some people treat settlement mode like a sandbox, like it's just like they're playing Minecraft. Other people want the the actual complicated systems. Other people want it to feel like they're playing a city simulator. So like, there's all these different play styles that all want this, and there are you know it, it would make more sense probably for there just to be. Uh, multiple ver- variations of sim settlements like here's the sandbox edition where we just gut all that stuff but uh, sure. I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a sucker for um, options like I love when I open up I start playing a game I can tell and there's like a deep <laughs> pool of options so I can customize it. I just because you know, otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to end up people releasing mods to do that to be like here's a mod for this yeah. mod to change this thing about it. And then you just have a mess of files. It's hard for people to find stuff. So I was like, yeah. I'll just put it all right in the mod. Like yes, it makes it a little more intimidating for for new people. But I think we've done a good job on our team with making sure that um, at the simplest level, all of some settlements is just. Go grab that hollow tape and then just put these things down and it'll take care of the rest for you. Like all the rest of yeah. all those other systems are completely optional. You could completely ignore the whole, everything else that's deep in there. If it's not up, if you're not into it, no problem. Um, and that's kind of a, a thing I've tried to stick to. And I think that there's a problem in game design. And I think one of the reasons that I, I have come to really appreciate big com- good companion mods for this reason is that you can basically do anything now in games. Like the, we've got the technology now, there's really no limitations. So then it actually becomes a problem of if you give the player too many options, they have paralysis of choice. There's too many things they could be doing at any given moment. I find this whenever yeah. I start playing yeah. Skyrim, if I install like the, the most popular 200 mods, I have way too many options. I don't even know what to do. Like I have too many, there's too many yeah. perk options. There are too many, uh, I have too many different tools in my inventory. There are too many things I can craft where I'm just like, I don't even know what I should be doing anymore. Uh, and I think that, <laughs> that ends up being a problem in gaming and that when you keep piling on more features, but the nice thing about things like companions is like something like Inigo, if nobody ever even engages with him beyond just recruiting him, he adds a lot. He's constantly uh, quipping in on things that are going on. And so it's just like a passive uh, improvement to the game without having to introduce uh-huh. extra player problems and choice. And I, I have to, we have to battle that with some settlements of like, we almost are at a point where it's like every time we want to add a feature, we need to cut a feature just so that it doesn't become too convoluted. Yeah, I can't imagine dealing with that number of options that you have. I mean, I'm so glad they're all there. Like, <laughs> like that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's also cool. Uh, all the way down. And the first time I had to scrap a site and stuff, I was just really impressed with how you handled that. And um, I was because I was on an older laptop and it was like I went over my belt limit or something and I was just playing around with seeing how things worked and stuff. Yeah. And I just really appreciated like how well all that stuff functioned. And yeah, it's amazing. In terms of like compa- the weird one, and weirdly linking it back to dialogue in a strange way, I, I'm, I go back and forth on this. But when you're doing a quest and you're trying to give the player options on what to say, it's an absolute nightmare in terms of that. Do you, what choice do you put in? It's also a nightmare when you're just trying to configure a more advanced follower, and you're also trying to m- maintain their character. And so certain behaviors may not suit certain characters. And, you know, there's things that a lot of followers that are very advanced. Well, you just get these like reams and reams and reams of options. You know, take your helmet off when you're swimming. You know, like, <laughs> like really, 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 yeah. really micromanaged things, you know. Yeah. Um, only eat sweet rolls on a Wednesday. I said that'd be a good one for any of you. But um, <laughs> there's, several, there's, there's several ones that are, I just, I try and, I try and, the first thing that I did to kind of try and, separate out those options and not clutter the topic window was using sitting down to condition some of those extra you know bits and bobs of content and i find that can be interesting uh it's an interesting way of doing it um but then it just always goes like i've added 
Yeah, so it, it kept a lot of that stuff. It, it forces you to go to an inn or somewhere safe and chill out with that companion, and then it opens up new dialogue. Like, those, there are so many hidden quests in Inigo that you've completed weirdly, go for actually. I'm not going to give anything away, but there's a hidden quest that most people don't complete for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours in a playthrough. You've completed it. And okay. you've kind of got to the top tier of that, which is unlocks, I think... The way I do it is, so every conversation you have essentially boils down to two answers or three answers. Every one of those answers adds to the pool of available Inigo dialogue based on that answer. So instead of, if you say um, that you like fighting spiders, you're absolutely cool with spiders, you love smashing spiders as much as Inigo does, he'll have uh, 20 new lines about being positive towards spiders added to his pool of random dialogue that may or may not fire, but they are in there from that point on. And every single conversation does that, and it's a quest, a hidden quest oh, that, that operates underneath that. And then un- underneath that, so he'll like uh, underneath that. There's several other ones um, that branch out. That there's one that takes normally takes uh, whew, probably a month in a playthrough. It sounds ridiculous, but yeah, but like if someone's playing a long-term character, it takes a month to play through, and you haven't. I'm waiting for you to trigger it. <laughs> like you're, like, I've seen. You've got like two. You've got you've got you're like two conversations in, and there's actually a third one. And then if that third one is complete, then it opens up possibilities other. But it, there's no strong like once you've done this, this definitely happens. It's all just introducing new random chances. Right. So it becomes a like saturation thing. So there's not even a random chance unless you like you know when you heard Mr. Dragonfly's story, his yeah. epic origin story. I can't believe you put that into the main episode. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was brilliant. That was actually quite a long story, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like about 22 minutes or something. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... <laughs> but if you go, but if, if you go and to the place where that happened, and if you find the brothers, then he can say a line, and that line moves the quest forward, and like that he'll never talk about, but he'll remember, and then another entirely unrelated thing can happen, but only once that's happened. And but I've got about five of those quests all running along. I just keep track of stuff. There's loads of stuff with Inigo that you've not even touched on, um, and uh, and you may you may never touch on it. Well, there's the, I don't I don't want to put spoilers. Over. I don't want to put spoilers for my plans of future chapters. Um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, obviously, um, Windhelm. Every time we go to Windhelm, Inigo pretty much complains, and um, so we get out of <laughs> yeah. there as fast as possible. But of <laughs> yeah. course. Of course, I think everyone's realized that uh, Leonard does, in fact, want to become the Thane of everywhere. So yeah, I don't want to do spoilers <laughs> because, you know, so it's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> there is there is there is always possibilities that we're going. And at the moment, I am planning at least I think I've got three more chapters after this planned. And that's not including the main quest finishing or wow. any mod thing. So. I got a while to discover <laughs> things with with, with uh, Inigo. It, so. Now, do, do you find yourself, uh, Gary, when you're watching people play Inigo and you see them having different mods interact, do you sometimes think, like, yeah. I wish I had infinite time so that I could make Inigo comment on that thing too, even though it's not even in a DLC oh, yeah. or main game? Because that, oh, man, the... My like, I think a lot of people who play these games religiously and like are constantly bulking up their load order or thinking about their next playthrough, I think we're all dreaming about that dream playthrough where the everything is so super dynamic and anything can happen and all the things reference each other and it's all perfectly bug free. Uh, and I constantly am I, I find that with my own mods is like I'm like oh man I wish I had more time because it would be cool if like this character could comment on this thing that happens from this one specific mod just to make sure that it just feels that real. Yeah, oh, definitely. And I get told that I need to add this DLC content all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I would love to, you know? Right. It really is just what I said before. It's just that, it's that and it's not, I know you're not just talking about DLC, but now there's, you know, there are great mods like Lucian comments on a bunch of um, other mods. And I've given out that, like, of the voice, uh, I made a voice pack um, for immersive role players a couple of years ago, where it's just Enigo saying a lot of stuff he doesn't actually say in the mod and some stuff he does say in the mod. But people can construct new lines out of that and stuff. So it saves me recording new stuff. I just give out the voice pack and say, okay, yeah. if you want to have your character talk to Inigo, right, you then use this voice pack and then come, you know, I'll, I'll oversee it or whatever. I'll, I'll check it. But, you know, um, that seems to be a good way to do it. But I, I, yeah, there's loads of things that I would love to do. Like, you know, even things that don't really even 
wouldn't even really work very well with a follower. I'd like to have him say something about it, like the Forgotten City and things like that, because you could teleport him in there, you know, and he'd right. be very confused and just completely lose <laughs> his mind and stuff. And, um, but, you know, Clockwork or whatever, um, you know, obviously, like the Dragonborn, um, yeah, I would love to do all that. And it really is, if I, if I stopped what I was doing, to start doing that, you know, it would just be a rabbit hole I'd never play my own. I think <laughs> <laughs> problem. Every time a mo- every time a new mod comes out, you've got to exactly. sort of pretty much, yeah. yeah. But man, would that be cool, right? Like to have a companion. Oh, yeah. Like one of one oh, of the things uh, one of the things I've started experimenting with, and I think if I I crack this, we're gonna open up, we're gonna hit a lot of legal issues. But um, I've started experimenting <laughs> with uh, deep speech, um, with the plan wow. of uh, using it to generate voice. Um, uh, Text to speech for NPCs because I think that like in the modding community yeah. this would be f- ridiculous. Like if all of a sudden you could we could oh, just it would be um I'm, but I'm, I'm what I think is going to happen is I'm going to do it. I'm going to release a, a demo and then I'm going to get a I'm going to get a bunch of legal <laughs> services. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but man, it would make things so much easier if we could just text to speech. Oh, really would this content like especially for Fallout Four where we have the voice protagonist that limits. I mean, you've seen the the, the biggest thing. With all the major quest mods now, is they're just basically saying, you know, it's just not worth it to do the player voice uh, because you limit your role play potential. Um, you uh, you're forced to do the four dialogue choice, and it's just a whole lot of mess. But man, even in something like yours, where if you could text to speech characters from other mods or from the DLC and and oh get them God. to say exactly what they want, it would just speed up the workflow so much and make the writing speech. so much easier. Is it, yeah. Does it sort of mimic the voice? So, like, if you wanted to add lines to Lydia or something, it would yes. sound like Lydia. Yes, yeah. and it's yeah. very, wow. it's yeah, very it's a bit con- monotone right now. But yeah, it's pretty close. Like, it can be sometimes uh, from the test I heard. Yeah, the the, the, va- yeah, the yeah. latest variations are very convincing because basically that now yeah. you can train it on certain types of dialogue. So, for example, the training that most people test with is they'll take audiobooks because that's the single person right. reading for hours so you get like every possible syllable they could say the problem is, is audiobooks tend to be read in fairly fair, mono, fairly monotone oh, but if yeah. it, so that's what's happening right okay. right so then the trainer is based around those tones and it thinks that's what it sounds like but if you train off of something like a podcast where people are a little more lively or uh yeah. you know, if you take an actor who's been in a lot of films you can start to get a little more emotion in there and so some of the demos i've heard are freaking mind-blowing like where it's like i mean we're probably less than a year away from people releasing uh like career ending fake audio <laughs> like it's that it's well that's that it and then you've got the ai stuff that google's doing with suplex and stuff where they're you know and it's just like if you mix the two together then you're talking about having to restrict building a character by restricting what they say rather than giving them lines but you're actually like taking an ai and saying this is your role yeah. <laughs> like, you know, play this the best you can. Your basic yeah. goal is this, and then you just let them do what they would do. And that's you know, if, the, if you get to the stage where they're almost passing the Turing test now, you know, so right, like, right, you know, yeah, that's that coming. Day. That's definitely so, going to be the future yeah. of companions. But that okay, part's so still a ways off. We're now talking about followers who have actual AI can generate yeah. <laughs> lines, generate lines on the, on the fly, and do believable voice. Yes, that is coming. Yeah. Oh, All of that doomed. is coming. We're doomed. <laughs> we're doomed. It's that's still a way. It. We're, if we're you doomed. if you look at some of the the stuff that's going on with that, it's like uh, uh, Microsoft <laughs> has famously released Twitter accounts controlled by these bots, and people inevitably get them to declare themselves Nazis. Like that's the fun of those yeah, bots now right. is you can you can curb them into saying horrible things, uh, which of course the internet will do. And so that <laughs> it's not particularly intelligent, but it will. You can find people will clip out conversations where it was like, wow, if I had read that, I would have believed that was two real humans talking and it's just two AI bots. So it can get to a point there, but it's easy it's to break. Uh, so, yeah, you, you combine that tech you can, with you this. Combine that with deep fakes. Yeah. You know, you combine that with deep fakes and stuff now as well. And it's just, you know, wow. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty very old. old. <laughs> but I, oh. I think the I think the the deep speech stuff could be amazing in the mod scene. So, um, where we're not we're not trying to profit from it. We're not trying to because like this is where the legal issues I think will come in. Would be, uh, you know, imagine that EA makes a voice actor sign a contract, and I'm using EA because we all think treat them like the evil uh, empire they are. Uh, but if you if they start having their voice actors sign contracts that say like basically we can use your voice in perpetuity, then all of a sudden those VAs get one contract and then they're out of a job for life because that voice yeah, their voice yeah. is effectively owned. I could see Which that. Is, that w- that's a I battle. don't think 
I don't think anyone's going to. do. Well, the thing is, is, is these voice actors, the problem for them, of course, is what they'll start doing is they'll use this technology to sample thousands of voices and then they'll mix a lot of different styles to create a unique voice that's not any <laughs> one voice actors. Yeah. And yeah. then they'll never have to they'll never have to pay a voice actor again. They can yeah, they sure. can just come up with a they can come up with a personality voice, name it, and then they can copyright that voice. Yeah, they can that's, like that's Bethesda coming. could own a voice for an NPC, and that NPC's voice could be specifically owned by Bethesda for for forever. And of course, good grief! Yeah, but that's for, I mean that's all coming. Though, that's this, this dystopian stuff is definitely coming. Um, could that have <laughs> could that have helped you with the Inigo mod though? Like for example, in, instead instead of um, constantly bugging. I mean, as long as those voice actors that worked for you didn't mind, if you said to them, if, as, as long yeah. as the technology was there, as I said, if I change my mind and want some more um, lines, do you mind if I use this deep voice to generate the lines so I don't have to keep bugging you? And they say yes. Yeah. That would actually allow so you to then. <laughs> yeah. But you'd so, have the technology would have to be there. I'd love some kind of, I don't know if this exists, King Gas within it, but you'd almost imagine there would need to be some kind of graph where you can change the emotion mid sentence or something. You know, yes, like, you, yes, that does exist. Yeah. That's the thing that's crazy yeah, about this. Cool. It's like there's like a bu yeah, bunch yeah. of buttons that'll be like uh, to change the inflection at a certain point in the wave file. In the wow. current, and that's in current implementations. And like this is still very novice stuff. Like it's all just like free, like there's just gits available out there, like of uh, hobbyists or researchers doing this. There's not even anything. Uh, super professional yet so like once we get to i mean we're, we're you're going to see very soon a software like premiere for voice like that's going to happen um and it's yeah. going to it's yeah. going to be a massive game changer for creative projects because it'll free up people like you who you know are obsessed with quality and making sure all these little details are done can do that without having to rely on a lot of other people the downside of that is when you give all this power to individuals and take away the need for other people as we have massive social collapse so you know it's a <laughs> <laughs> no not that we're going to get darker or anything here uh, yeah, no, I, you get you also get actors creating their own voice profiles and then uploading them to Spotlight or whatever. You know, right. being able to kind of say deep Shakespearean performances they could never handle in person. You know, yeah. And uh, you've just got the AI to do it for them with their voice. You know, <laughs> you know, pe people are going to think <laughs> there's like, something wrong with me. I think the last three podcasts I've done have gone this direction by the end. So clearly, all of my work I'll, on I'll deep speech is messing sure. with my brain. <laughs> but I, I still, I mean, the only reason I'm pursuing it, I'm excited about the idea of being able to generate audio for these characters uh that we have no access to so it's not even talking about monster like obviously you can voice in and go you're not going to ever replace yourself with a bot but like you said go for being able to voice get lydia new lines would be incredible like how cool would that be to like well, have her have a big yeah. conversation with inigo well isn't there a way around that because one of the big problems is to add new lines to Lydia, if you want to use a, a mod and then get some voice actor to do uh, her new lines for her, it wouldn't match the old lines. Right. But with this deep voice, couldn't you just use the new voice actor and then redo all the original lines without having to put extra work on this new voice actor? In fact... Well well, what I'm saying is you don't even need just, to replace her voice. I'm saying that the the deep speech can take oh, all know, the existing voice files, analyze them, and come up with Lydia's voice I know that's what you said, but you said there are yeah. legal issues. You said there oh, were right, legal right, issues right, there, right? Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. like, you... Oh, you, I see what you're saying. You're, like, converted to a new actor. So a new, a new actor. If, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So it's all... It's all same, all yeah. of her lines. Because that's, you don't even yeah, need to use the new actor's time that much. You just get the actor to do the line, the new yeah, lines. Olivia, a Lydia voice replacer with added yeah. new scenes or whatever. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we like we've done that a couple of times with Conqueror. We've taken a couple of vanilla characters that are very underutilized and just had the VA re-record their lines, and now we just we just make that character. But it's a lot of work. Whereas, yeah, this could eliminate that, where you just have them read our new lines and then generate all the old lines using deep speech. Yeah, absolutely, that could be. A thing. Sorry to sorry to change the subject slightly. Um, but King Gath, I was meaning to ask you, how do you deal with your uh, voice, uh, your voice types in the CK and uh, your folder hierarchy and stuff? Do you just put them all into one quest that has like all your like? Do you just have like one quest with like lots of different voice types in that that you're reflecting? You know, uh, like, your depends. idle dialogue and stuff. It depends on the the depth of the character. So for like our major characters, they each have their own quest, and then for 
you know, a character. And then we have like when we have a bunch of little characters, they'll all just go in one quest. Uh, Fallout can handle pretty crazy complex dialogue trees without issue. Like I think, but I think we counted like Bethesda has like six hundred dialogue quests in Fallout Four or something like that. So we're just like, oh, okay. Yeah. So there's no there's no penalty for just going nuts with these. So now I the only time the only reason I I group them generally is for con is to save myself the effort of conditioning. It's just like, oh, sure. these can just yeah. I can just use I can just duplicate this block of dialogue with the conditions and then just add on the actor uh, or the voice type check as well and I'm done. And it just makes it a lot easier that way. But Yeah, I mean because yeah, what I'm doing is it's that whole thing of just I thought I I wanted to I wanted citizens in this place, but I didn't want to have to kind of voice forty people per se. Um yeah. and they not mean it may not be forty and it's just they don't really have to be they don't you know Anybody, but like, I don't want to also have to read. I don't want to generate face gen for all of them either, you know, because that can blow up things slightly. And um, so I ended up using a lot of the corpses that you find with, <laughs> 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 and, and uh, like, uh, and just basically doing live versions of them and uh, grabbing them in an alias, you know, and giving them a name and stuff that way, just for background flavor, you know, just yeah. for certain little moments. And stuff. You, you got a thing and for corpses, people. I've noticed. There's this, this, there's a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we can devote more time to that later, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, in terms of the voice, so I, I do a voice file and then I sorry a voice type and I associate it really with a quest for like the moment, and it just feels like a really unwieldy way to do it. But I've discovered that say once lines don't work if you if your quest isn't starting uh, game uh, start game enabled, it oh, needs to reset it and Skyrim anyway, um, which causes problems. So. Um, yeah, I, was, I don't know. It's, it's just managing the, the voice files and stuff. I think it's just like everything in modding; it can be very unwieldy at yeah. times. I think. Um, I mean, they've improved. Yeah, they've improved the dialogue and scene system in Fallout 4 pretty dramatically. Like I've watched the workflow for setting up dialogue yeah. trees for Skyrim. It looks like a nightmare. I don't want anything to do with that. I don't know how yeah, you do it. <laughs> it's so it's so easy <laughs> in Fallout 4 yeah. once you get it. Once you get it going, uh, like once you figure it out. So like it's and so you, you it's so straightforward. Well, we've actually well we've actually. Um, created uh, uh an import method that we use that we're we're going to perfect and release will release to the public eventually but we can actually take a, a an excel sheet and import it directly as dialogue scenes now what? Yeah. oh my god that's amazing uh, <laughs> oh because you have the, yeah you have dialogue to use as actually its own section in that folder isn't it is it you take your plugging into that or something well we can we're just taking is advantage it? of x edit and scripting and stuff like that that's but it it's right. makes the workflow phenomenal and it's because everything is structured intelligently in the back end and well it, as intelligently as a bethesda engine is uh it's it's done pretty yeah, data sure. structurally so whereas like when i look at the skyrim stuff it looks like nonsense the way the trees are set up yeah, that is that's that's it yeah it's, <laughs> it's pretty much nonsense and it has i mean like i i don't i, I don't know i've had so many dialogue views where i'm like okay i've added this many options, I'm now going to have to switch to player dialogue mode. So it's, you're just looking at it like in, in pure text, because I'm very visual. I like yeah. to work. Like I, I like to see the flow of how conversations are going, and, and some of them are absolutely insane. But it gets to the point where it's, the, the engine can't handle very much, really. Right. Like, Well, it can, but you know, it, 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 not much by why, for what I need it to do, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh-oh, we lost him. Did he just? Oh, I, want, I, I maybe he has got like a call limit on his uh, on his phone. Let's try. Uh, let me try ringing it one more time. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what this does. I just clicked the call on our group call again. Apologies, everybody listening for uh, for this little technical glitch because it was at two hours exactly on our call that he got dropped. So there must have been some sort of limitation there. Uh, let's see here. Right. Let's see. Add call. Add to call. Here we go. Uh, I think we're about to wrap it up anyway. So probably perfect timing. If he doesn't go, we'll uh, we'll close it out without him. But uh, for for anybody who doesn't, oh, That's there he is. There. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was yeah, the right. call hit two hours exactly. I was like, oh, that must be a that must be some limitation either with Skype or <laughs> with your with your phone. Um, well, this has been fantastic talking with you guys. Um, really appreciate all your insights, uh, Gary, on the mod. Um, we're super super impressed with it, and thank you, Gopher, for helping carry things because I would have just drawn a blank with a lot of this Inigo stuff. I haven't played with it nearly as much as you have. Well, absolutely. Thanks for asking me uh, to join in. It's an uh, absolute pleasure to meet you. I've been obviously playing Inigo for, you know, I, almost five chapters now. Um, it is weird hearing your real voice, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Can, 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 well, can no, I, obviously that's good in a way because it, it means there's a difference between the two of you. When so when I go back <laughs> to talking to Inigo, I'm gonna th- I'm gonna see Inigo. So, you know, I'm gonna hear him. So, you know, I think we need I yeah, think we I, need to take this opportunity. I think you need to do if you if we don't if you don't mind, Gary, doing a custom intro for Gopher for, in Inigo's voice. I think that's only appropriate. A, a custom intro. What would you want me to say? I don't know. What would it say? Something <laughs> on, like. On, uh, you you know the like the the start of the episode like the little voiceover like the the uh, uh, the the telling what's happened in the previous episode that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, oh. well I, you know it's a shame actually because it's then a, a phone, but it would be funny if before the video started, you know, Enigo could just say, "And we're back." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, I absolutely need that recorded in good quality. Right? So, so I can not put this. that in one of my videos. Yeah, I need I might actually contact you and get some custom lines actually just 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 for the lols there actually if you're if you're up for sure, it. Yeah, I'm between uh, microphones right now, but yeah, certainly. <laughs> no worries. No worries at all. Yeah, no, it's been an absolute pleasure and thank you so much for inviting me to do this, King Gas. Honestly, it's fantastic. Uh, no problem. I, if we really if we uh if we get more time some other time to talk, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts on uh, companions, but I think uh, your phone stopping at two hours was a sign. Uh, we all gotta we all gotta right. go back to our respective hobbies because we're all addicts and we have lots of content to create. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so great talking with you guys. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks a lot, Mom.